Hi guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great. Um, today we're going to work on the character class and we're going to start off this whole inventory system thing. So there's going to be a bunch of things working together here and uh, we're going to have to work on a lot of different classes for this to work properly. Um, but before we get started, please check out the description box as usual. Uh, got a bunch of useful links down there to different playlists. My support page, my Twitter, please follow me on there. Uh, drop a like, subscribe if you want, otherwise just keep watching. So if we just get started here, I found one error in our in our travel menu state, um, which is this number of locations variable. I just want to set that to 5 since we did change the enumerations in travel menu state. Uh, right here we removed enemy from here so that's why we're getting that weird weird little error at the at the beginning where it says there's no such location uh, it's this one right here so we're getting this popping up so we don't want that so just to fix that and it should be fine now what I want to start off by doing is just like that okay cool I just set a little timer on my phone it helps me keep track of time um, but yeah, let's just get started. So what I want to do is I want to go into character CPP right here and the thing is we're gonna be creating an inventory system, right? Now to do that What I need to do first of all I'm gonna just close off all the other stuff because we're not gonna be really working on that right now any other states or anything like that right now um, probably an inventory state eventually but not right now like I said uh, so I'm just going to close everything besides character and all that stuff. So there we go. Now, the idea is to have a array of items. Now, if I just paint that out to you, this is a good concept to learn uh, generally in, in programming is uh, with inheritance, right? So you have your class item here. Okay, this is going to be your class item. Sorry about hitting the mic. Uh, and this is going to be your base class so it's going to have all the item specific stuff that uh, any type of item will have okay it's just going to be kind of like a node uh, base class like I don't know how to how to say like a base blueprint like your foundation for for a house right just your foundation and then you're gonna build on top of that foundation another class called uh, maybe weapon right and then you're gonna build another class on top of this foundation called maybe armor now you can kinda play around with this as you want you can you can use this class eventually as a foundation for different armor types leg armor anything like that or you can just create leg armor uh, all that stuff within this class itself so you don't have to create subclasses for that um, but it's a good thing to know like you can you can keep going with inheritance so and then weapon but the key thing here is these two are both children of the item class so the computer is gonna see these two having an item part in itself that means that you can create an array because if you remember arrays can only hold uh, this is my beautiful version of an array okay don't hate just like that something like that okay beautiful doesn't look that crooked in in the computer but anyway an array can only hold different items and objects of the same type so you can't create an array holding an armor, a weapon, a weapon, an armor, blah, 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 blah. You can't do that. This array is going to be to a pointer of an item. All right, just a basic item. And that means that we can put in both armors and weapons in here or any, any type of item. It's going to be in here. But it's, when, when it's held in here, it's not really going to be pointing to the weapon or armor specific parts. It's only going to be pointing to the item part. But eventually, if you bring it out, then you can check if it's an armor or an item, and then you can use that data. And here, even if it's two different types, you can keep them in the same array. That's what I'm trying to say. So basically, that's going to be our structure. And to do that, we're going to create a character, a thing in character, where we have our inventory. Okay, so it's basically just going to be an inventory um, vector basically of an item class now to start that off what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to create a new um, 
item here. Let's see. Uh, do I want to create a H file only or a C? Actually, I do want to create a class here and call it item. And no base class, virtual destructor. Boom. Okay. That's all, right? Item.h. And I'm going to include. Now, what I actually want to do is I want to create an inventory class. But. Yeah, that would be the best. So we have our item class. This is going to be all the items, everything is just going to be the base class for item. Don't have anything in it yet. I'm going to do a private section right there. This video is going to be just preparing for everything. So then we're going to create a new item here or a new class called inventory. Okay, now this is going to be a little bit of a C++ tutorial heavy mini series within this series because we're going to be working a lot with pointers and references and dynamics memory and everything so it's going to be kind of scary for those of you who haven't worked a lot with inheritance and dynamic memory and stuff but please just bear with me I'm going to try to explain as well as I can please please check out the tutorials this is just not not just to increase my views or anything on those videos you can watch anyone's videos just make sure you watch videos on inheritance and uh, dynamic memory allocation now I do happen to have videos on exactly what I'm doing here which is going to be dynamic arrays okay I do have a bunch of videos at the end of my C++ examples series somewhere there uh, you can watch um, just exactly this what I'm gonna do here so you can do that if you want but anyway to get started what's gonna happen is an inventory right here is gonna hold include uh, uh, item dot h okay so it's gonna hold item so I'm gonna include item here all right I'm just gonna shove over all the CPP files over to this side I'm gonna put character here inventory game state like that close travel menu state okay so there we go now item doesn't have anything in it yet inventory doesn't have anything yet character is gonna include uh, it's gonna include inventory.h okay so we're gonna whoops we're gonna include inventory.h here uh, and the important part here is that inventory has a item pointer pointer items whoops um, like that now this is the complicated part okay this is the complicated part but what does this mean so this is a you probably you're probably um, familiar with the regular pointer like that we could do that we could do that but this is much more efficient to create an array of pointer pointers if you only have a pointer I probably have some time I just want to explain this to you because this is gonna be a little heavy you can watch the tutorials like I said but if we have our array here uh, if you have an array beautiful beautiful array like this with a bunch of like it, it just it's just pointer right so that that item pointer item pointer is gonna be this array we're gonna create a new array of items in here but the problem is we're gonna create a big array maybe of 10 slots and then 20 slots because you don't want to increase the array size every time a new item comes in you kind of want to create a big array and just leave it be and then if that fills up you create a really big array uh, make sure you don't have to kind of do that operation over and over again um, so there you go but but what happens if you have a single pointer array that means that these objects like the only valid object is an armor right here that's the only thing you have in your inventory then you have a bunch of empty items still occupying space in your array right here okay they're occupying space they shouldn't be here but they're occupying space everything an item needs to hold is is right here okay but they're empty they're kind of just default this is the only valid one that has data that you can use and stuff so we're gonna have one armor in here but the arrays total size is gonna be 10 or something and the rest of the nine spaces are gonna be like just default values for these huge item objects but what you do if you have a pointer pointer like this let's make another beautiful array 
of maybe like, I don't know, 10 spaces, something like this. When you have an item pointer pointer, like this, what happens is all of these are now, this is my pointer symbol, okay? All of these are pointers. And pointers are just there. They, they're not, they're just pointers to item objects, but they don't have any data associated to them. They're all null pointers. They're just not pointing to anything yet. This is a symbol for null pointer. I know this isn't really going that well. It should, oh my god, dude. It should look something like that. That's a null pointer. You know one of these symbols? Something like that. Like this. That means it's not pointing to something. Something like that. Uh, whatever. These are all just null pointers. But your armor in the first one, you created it with dynamic memory. So you said item at position 0 is a new armor. And that item pointer is now actually still a pointer in this array but it creates another object somewhere in memory another space in memory like that which has the armor object in it but all of these other pointers are just empty they're not holding any default values so they're just here so when you have a large array like this with pointer pointers it's a lot more efficient now this just became a huge as tutorial but I hope that taught you something so I'm gonna keep this as a pointer pointer sadly I'm gonna have to end the video uh, right here and just keep going in the next one what we did explain what we're gonna do I did and um, did kind of create these classes which we're gonna start using so just prepare with that and don't freak out too much don't worry please check out my YouTube videos on just dynamic arrays just search for them fi epic final boss dynamic array or something like that you'll find the best one that I made uh, and that should help you out uh, but yeah thanks for watching and all the support as always I'm sorry for not being that active on the comments I haven't been able to answer all the comments but I really appreciate all the support and I love all you guys so uh, so yeah thank you so much please keep learning check out the description box for all these useful useful links follow me on Twitter subscribe drop a like uh, maybe check out my support page or other playlists and all that stuff so I hope that helps you out Thanks again. Take care. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.